Now to say that times have been a wee bit tough of late is kind of like saying James Corden doesn't have much talent. It's kind of understatement of the frickin' century. But if you find your budget for your next smartphone is a wee bit tight, well don't get all depressed about it. Sure, you might not be able to afford the latest spangly Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, but neither should you have to resort to a Barbie Playphone. Although that said, for just 15 quid you do get realistic sound effects, a bundled unicorn phone case and Barbie's mates on speed dial. Bargain. Regardless, a budget of 300 puns can buy you a nippy blower with a gorgeous AMOLED display, capable camera tech, impressively long battery life, and a bunch of features you won't even find on those more expensive flagships like an actual headphone jack and expandable storage. I've tested out absolutely loads of these budget-friendly smartphones, so here's my pick of the best blows you can get here in Blighty for under £300 that I've personally tested out. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now let's start with Xiaomi's own Redmi Note 13 5G, which recently hit the UK with a stonking asking price of just £279. You can get even more shaved off that if you're lucky enough to grab the early bird offer. The Redmi Note 13 5G is a plastic blower, although you've got some Gorilla Glass action up front to help prevent scratches. And it's also IP54 splash resistant, so it can handle the occasional bit of inclement British weather without exploding into burny fragments. While last year's model may do with the basic IPS screen, the Redmi Note 13 5G serves up a gorgeous AMOLED display with superior contrast and poppier tones. It's a full HD 120Hz panel and it's solid hardware for this price. So it's great for telly fans, photo editing, the works. And yeah, it is just a crummy mono speaker setup that you get slapped on there, but at least you've also got a headphone jack. And the Redmi Note 13 5G has certainly proven itself nippy enough to smoothly run all of your everyday apps. Although that said, if you are a gamer, you will want to stick to light affairs such as your PUBGs, your Call of Duties, etc. The Dimensity 6080 brains can't cope with more demand and fare. Battery life is bloody good thanks to the mighty 5000 mAh capacity cell, although it does charge kinda slow. While the 108 meg camera lacks optical image stabilization and struggles in less than ideal conditions. You also don't get Xiaomi's fresh new HyperOS launcher out of the box, although MIUI 14 offers a similar user experience, just not quite as streamlined. And while Xiaomi is only promising two OS updates in total, you are at least guaranteed four years of security patching. And if you act quick, you can upgrade yourself to the even sexier Redmi Note 13 Pro 5G for the price of just 299 GBPs. This offers several upgrades over the regular model, including an extra OS update, a sharper 1.5K screen, stereo speakers, a faster charging battery, and improved performance. And if the sound of that has really basted your beef, then definitely check out my full review. While I've also filmed a side-by-side -side type situation with the Redmi Note 13 5G, the Note 13 Pro, and the Note 13 Pro Plus. Yum. And while you're having a gander at Xiaomi's website, you should also check out the Poco M6 Pro, which you can, again, bag yourself for under £300. That design is similar to the Redmi Note 13 5G, so it's once again a placky frame with Gorilla Glass around front and IP54 splash resistance. The screen's also the same Full HD AMOLED with 120Hz refresh, but thankfully the Poco sports a stereo speaker arrangement for double the audio spaffage. The battery is the same size as the Redmi's, but it now supports nippier 67 watt wired charging. And as for the 64 meg rear camera, well, it's once again bang average. However, the Poco M6 Pro's performance is rather basic with a version of the old Helio G99 platform running the show. It's so simple, there's not even 5G support here. But if that doesn't bother you too much, well, there's plenty else to like at this price point. Otherwise, you might be jammy enough to catch the superior Poco X6 on sale so it comes under that £300 budget price point. Happens fairly often on Xiaomi's websites, they're always running price reductions. And the Poco X6 is certainly worth that upgrade for the beefier Snapdragon 7S Gen 2 chipset, which positively urinates all over that lethargic M6 experience. While the Poco X6 also boasts a few other advantages, including the more shatter-resistant Victor's front end. Lovely stuff. And another one of my favourite budget-friendly smartphones under £300 right now is the excellent OnePlus Nord CE3 Lite 5G. 
A stupendously crappy name for sure, but the user-friendly Oxygen OS experience makes it a worthy alternative to the Redmi's and the Poco's. Let's start naturally with that bright lime design, which is sure to attract a fair few glances. Or you can also get it in grey if you just hate life. That 6.72 inch Full HD screen is IPS tech, not OLED like some rivals, but it's still bright and reasonably poppy, with a 120Hz refresh rate for smooth sailing. No worries on the audio front either, you've got a beefy stereo speaker arrangement, plus an ultra loud 200% mode, which is a bunch of marketing guff, but nevertheless means that you do get very loud sound when you need it. Oxygen OS squats happily on top of Android 13 and OnePlus has you covered with a couple of years of OS updates and three years of security patches. The Nord CE3 Lite is powered by the Snapdragon 695 once again so it can deal with some not too intensive gaming. And yeah, there's 5G support for getting online. But one of the best bits is that 5000 mAh battery which effortlessly delivers a full day of play plus 67 watt SuperVOOC charging so you can juice it up again in just over half an hour. And OnePlus has also upgraded the camera tech over the previous generations. The CE3 Lite rocks a 108 meg Samsung HM6 sensor. And frankly, it's an absolute banger at this budget price point, complete with nine in one pixel binning to handle those pesky low light shots. Now, if you're a bit strapped for cash, well, Motorola is another smartphone manufacturer well worth checking out. And at this sort of budget price point, one of their best options right now is the Moto G84. The highlight here has to be that gorgeous POLED screen. It's proper 6.5 inch, 120 hertz eye candy, and it's backed by stereo speakers for a merry old Netflix session. The Motorola has stuck with the slightly creaky Snapdragon 695 that it absolutely loves to stuff inside of G-Series blowers, and it's fine for everyday type shenanigans, but only really good for a light bit of gaming on the side, struggling with more hardcore stuff like Genshin. But at least that chipset doesn't sap the juice. The Moto G84 actually has the kind of staying power that most of us can only dream of, while that 50 meg camera with optical image stabilization is generally dependable too. And I'm also a fan of Motorola's stock Android setup, with the excellent Moto app adding some genuinely helpful features. Although I am less enamored with Motorola's sporadic updates and extremely limited number of OS upgrades. But still, the Moto G84 is a lovable wee bugger and it's a stylish sod too, sporting a funky fake leather finish that really helps it stand out against other budget blowers. And speaking of snazzy designs, the Moto Edge 40 Neo is another stunner at this budget price. This time, it doesn't just look good, it actually smells rather lush because Motorola gave it a quick spray of cologne when they chucked it in the box. <laughs> I don't know why I'm sticking my nose right into the box, because honestly, I think I could smell this from across the other side of the room. But even more impressive is the IP68 water and dust resistance, so the Edge 40 Neo can get a proper dunking in water and survive no worries. That's incredibly rare at this sort of price. And you got a few other upgrades over the Moto G84, including the Dimensity 7030 brains, which can cope quite happily with memory guzzling games like Genshin Impact. That POLED display is yet another stunner, with HDR10 Plus streaming support and 144Hz refresh. And the battery charges in proper quick fashion as well, although once again you're lumbered with the rather crap security and OS updates. Now Samsung may be heavily pimping its 2024 flagship phones right now, but if you don't happen to have a grand or more to drop on your next blower, well you may be more swayed by the mid-range Galaxy A34. Now the regular UK retail price is £400 for the A34, but for a substantial amount of time it's been on the Samsung UK website for just £300. And if you find it for £300, it's certainly a decent buy. For one, it's fully water and dust resistant just like the Neo so no worries if it gets proper moist. And also Samsung is offering years of OS updates and software support with the Galaxy A34, unlike quite a lot of other manufacturers in this best budget phones roundup. Looking at you, Xiaomi and Motorola. Sammy's bright and poppy Super AMOLED screen is proper eye candy, while the stereo speakers are easy on your lugs. MediaTek's Dimensity 1080 is the brains of the operation, so games usually play with a respectable frame rate and that 5000 mAh capacity battery keeps the Galaxy A34 chugging along until you dive under the duvet. Samsung has also packed this thing with the usual camera modes and as long as you don't snap away in the dark you'll generally get good results. 
Samsung's One UI launcher can be slightly divisive, though you're constantly being pushed to use Samsung's own services rather than Google's stuff in Androids. And then the less said about Bigsby, the better. Oh, sorry, it's got some bile in my mouth. But overall, I would say that the Galaxy A34 is decent value for this price. Otherwise, another alternative is the Galaxy A25 5G, which Samsung just launched alongside its S24 flagship phones. I haven't had a chance to properly test it out myself, unfortunately, but it's another option. The Nokia G60 5G is another respectable everyday smartphone for just 300 quid, with the added bonus that it's mostly constructed from recycled materials, so making one doesn't tit up the planet as much as other phones. And with quite a few years of OS and security updates guaranteed as well, hopefully you won't have to hoi it in the bin and replace it with another one in double quick time. The Nokia G60 is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 695, so once again this phone breezes through most tasks with a spring in its step and doesn't disintegrate if you try playing games either. That 6.58 inch screen is mere IPS tech sadly, but it's not a bad panel, still quite poppy, if not quite as bright as I would have liked. Battery life is as good as most of the phones in this best budget roundup where you get plenty of extra perks like expandable storage and an actual headphone jack. And while the Nokia G60 5G isn't a patch on the Pixel and quite a few others here for photography, it's still fine as long as the lighting isn't being a proper dick. Strong contrast and dim conditions are not this phone's friend. So that right now is my pick of the best budget smartphones you can grab in the UK for under £300 in 2024. Now, have I missed out your own personal favourite? Well, that's probably because there's so many bloody smartphones flying at my face constantly and unfortunately I haven't had a chance to test every single one. But if I have missed off your own personal pick, definitely let us know in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for unboxings and reviews of the latest tech to suit all budgets and have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.